Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Going on my favorite plays at the wide receiver position for week one of the NFL season on DraftKings. Very excited to be doing these NFL videos. If you haven't seen already, I have my quarterback breakdown and my running back breakdown videos all out. I posted those like three or four days ago. I can't remember exactly, but I recommend checking those out after you watch this video. Anyway, before we continue, if you could leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, if you could hit that subscribe button, it really helps me out, and I really appreciate it too. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss out any of my new content. And if you're looking for some extra content after I just do this uh, wide receiver breakdown video, my entire uh, NFL model, you could call it, cheat sheet, whatever you want to call it, is available on my Patreon. That is in the link in the description below. I'm going to be doing some extra content on there as well, too. So I'm not going to really going over my entire model on here just because I kind of want to keep that on the Patreon. But I'm going to show you a little preview of it. I'm going to be doing rankings. There's projections on there. I'd love to do a live stream if there's enough people interested in it. I don't want to do it for like 15 people. But if there's uh, quite a few people interested in sign up on Patreon, I'd love to do something like that. I have a Slack chat too. You can ask me all the questions you want all day, or you can just hang out. Or if I make a bad play and you want to uh, let me know about it, I'll only be, I'll only, my feelings will only be hurt for a little bit. So after that, I'll get over it. So anyway, let's get into this slate. So again, here's a little preview of this. So we got the player info here, the matchup, the Vegas totals, the pace that they play at. Uh, 2018 stats they had so we got you know receptions per game targets touchdowns per game their target share their average depth of target weighted opportunity share their market market share yards per reception catch percentage quarterback rating when targeting so it's got a lot of stuff on here and it's what i'm it, it's to help you dumb it down for the slate it's all color coded it's nice and neat i think it's nice and neat i put it into how i like it i think you guys will like it too the defense versus wide receiver dvoa DraftKings points allowed per game uh, once this data is available per PFF, this will be loaded on here. As of right now, it's using the past Super Bowl Week 20 data, so uh, this is not correct at the moment. But I'll have the wide receiver cornerback matchup, their percent advantage. So like right now, Brandon Cooks would get a 14% disadvantage to J.C. Jackson. So that'll be all uploaded on there. It's all color-coded. The yards per re uh, route uh, ran, uh, given up, I should say. Then we got the game info again, their yards per game allowed, the time, the games, the factors, the weather even. And then I got projections all the way on the right. So this thing's just fully loaded. It's different for each position, just a little bit, a couple tweaks, but here and there. But everything's color coded, projections, rankings all in there. So I think you guys will really like it if you're interested. I wouldn't sign up, though, until September 1st because it wouldn't make sense to sign up before uh, September because then you'll get double charged. So, But uh, if you guys are interested, link in the description below. I'm sorry to sound like a long commercial, but this is my first it's like my third NFL video. So for those of you who are new to the channel, I just want you guys to know what is available if you're interested. And enough plugging commercial time. Let's get into today's slate before you guys check out of the video before we get into any content. So obviously, if you want to play Odell, uh, I think he's a fine option. He's the new shiny toy in Cleveland. And I will say disclaimer, I am a huge, huge Browns fan. But I'll try not to sound biased. But obviously, I love all the Browns players and I love Odell. But... It's not the best matchup versus Tennessee. It's not the worst matchup. But if you want to play him, go with a Brown stack. I think it's fine. They're at home, which I do like. But Tennessee's defense is not the worst in the world. Again, if you want to play him, I think it's fine. Julio draws a tough matchup in Minnesota. So the first guy I really want to talk about is Mike Evans at 7,900. So uh, he's going up against San Francisco, who really struggled against the wide receiver position last year. They were 27th DVOA versus the pass, and, for, and they allowed 40 points per game to the position. They also allowed the most receiving touchdowns per game to the wide receiver position at 1.69. That's pretty substantial compared to the rest of the league. And this is really just one of the better all-around games for fantasy as it has one of the higher implied Vegas totals at 49. And both teams should play at a decently high pace in a very close game as the spread is only one right now. So should be close game, should be back and forth. So, but Evans will see some Richard Sherman, which is never ideal, but he still has the highest ceiling of any player in this game, and he's going to be lower owned than his lower priced teammate, Chris Godwin, who we will talk about later. And he isn't really a cast game option for me, but I think he's an excellent GPP uh, guy with his big play potential with his average depth of target of 15.7 or dot, And he has a yard per reception at nearly 18. So he's a big play guy. He's got plenty of upside. And if you want to pair him up with Jameis Winston, I have no problem with that. And then Tyree Kill is fine in GPP, so is Keenan Allen. They just have the best matchups in the world. AJ Green's not, no, he's not playing. Mark Cooper's dealing with that foot thing. It says he's going to be ready for week one, but I didn't really want to play someone at 7K that's dealing with a foot injury. Just didn't seem too worth it for me outside of a dart throw in a GPP. So the next guy I really want to talk about is Adam Thielen at 6,800. He 
Uh, he had an awesome first half of the uh, year last year and then started to tail off a little bit, but he draws an amazing matchup here versus Atlanta, who really struggles through who really struggled through the air last season as they were 29th DVOA versus the pass, and they allowed over 41 points per game to the position. He's an elite route runner, and defenses can't lock in on him with Diggs on the other side of him, and also Dalvin Cook is there to worry about in the backfield. He's got a solid quarterback in Kirk Cousins. He's not a great quarterback, but he's not bad either, and he's above, he's above average, so you can get him the ball and games at home so i'm not seeing a lot of downside here he's at a fair price at 6800 and i can see him carrying a fair amount of ownership on this slate too i think he's an excellent cash game play and i have no problem if you want to go with adam thielen stevon Diggs is fine too he's more of the gpp play i'd prefer adam thielen though for cash hilton no andrew luck probably not going to pay 6600 for ty hilton without andrew luck so let's talk about these uh, rams receivers we'll just group them all together here we got cooks woods and cup in my quarterback video, I mentioned Goff as a solid low-owned GBP play, so obviously I have to like all of his weapons outside of Todd Gurley. They don't really have a good tight end, so I got to love the receivers. They throw at the receivers all the time. Cooks is the guy I probably have the least amount of likeness for, mainly because of price, but he is the big hitter in this offense, and he could win you a week off a couple deep balls if they connect. Cup and Woods are more short route guys, but they are safe. Uh, plays as they are very efficient as they are in a, a high efficient high volume offense cup is sitting at only 5700 coming off the injury but reports are that he looks really really good out there but it seems like what every uh, report says for every injured player ever but it's what we have to go by apparently his times were you know better than it's ever been in certain drills so He's looking good, I guess, and uh, sometimes football can go beyond the numbers, I will say. And by that, I mean Goff loves Cup. They have a great connection. That's his guy, and when he's in trouble, that's where he's going to look. Cup's got soft hands. He runs good routes, and I love the price he's at. I think he's a pretty good option. Then the next guy, well, I guess Kenny Galladay, not too interested in it. I kind of want the run game from Detroit there. But this is the popular play here. Chris Godwin at 6,200. The hype beast, the guy everyone's talking about, everyone's number one sleeper. Everyone's mom even knows about him, their sister. Everyone knows to draft Chris Godwin this year, play him in fantasy. So let me tell you, he's going to be the highest on receiver on the slate, and it's a cash game staple for me. We all know the hype around Godwin. Arians is in town. He's in the Larry Fitzgerald role, and we all remember the report where Arians said he's never coming off the field, and he could see 100 receptions. Or he could get 100 receptions. And hey, I'm here for it. I'm a Godwin fan. I liked him last year, and this is probably his breakout year, just to be honest. He's got talent, and it's going to, he's going to see a ton of work in this offense. He's played nearly every snap with the starters in the preseason, and he looks to be in a very prominent role. As I've said, I think this is going to be a decently high-scoring, fast-paced, close game, which is great for fantasy, and I love Chris Godwin. He's one of my favorite plays on the entire slate. Now, that's not being bold or anything. That's probably pretty much everyone's uh, position on Chris Godwin this week, but he's one of my favorite plays. Love him in cash. Maybe you want to fade him in GPPs, but I still think he's fine in all formats. Love Chris Godwin. Then right below him, we got Tyler Lockett at 6,000. So I think he's a fine GPP play, not someone I'm too crazy about. But here's a crazy stat for you guys. Uh, I do have this stat loaded on the sheet. But uh, Russell Wilson had a perfect 158.3 pass rating when targeting Lockett last season. And that's a pretty good sample size, too. I mean, you might see that with the guys that get like four or five targets. But, this, I mean, it's a pretty big sample size here. And with Dougie Fresh retiring, Lockett is the number one target on this offense, especially with DK Metcalf looking very doubtful for week one after his minor surgery. The Seahawks have a really soft matchup versus Cincy as they were terrible in all aspects on defense last season. 2050 view versus the pass, but I will say I much prefer the rushing side of this offense because they are a much heavier run or run heavy first or run first team, run the ball a lot. So I prefer uh, Chris Carson and company there, but I don't see why Wilson and Lockett can't keep up their hyper efficient ways at home versus Cincy. Could get a long ball touchdown. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised uh, Lockett gets you know five six catches, close to 100 yards and a touchdown, and you'd be fine at 6,000. But GP play, GPP play only. I'm not really looking to play him in cash. Another chalky guy now in Tyler Boyd at 5,800. I guess I will say uh, Alshon Jeffrey's okay. The Philly, Philly should put up some points. I do have interest in Carson Wentz. Jeffrey's one of the top options in the offense. So if you want to play him, I think it's okay. But I want to play Tyler Boyd in my cash games. He looks to be the wide receiver one for the first for the time being with A.J. Green's sideline until at least week three or four. The Bengals' offense is not going to be very good, but they're going to have to throw the ball a lot, which makes Boyd a fine play from a volume standpoint. 
especially since he's priced like a wide receiver too. And, you know, sometimes in fantasy, the only thing that matters is volume. And Boyd's not, he's not a bad receiver though. He's got talent. And last year, Boyd had an excellent season for his standards and looked, he looked, you took a big step forward, and you could take even a bigger step forward this season. I think in cash games, you start your wide receiver core with Godwin and Boyd, and you work from there. And then going down, I think Jarvis Landry, not too interested this week, especially with uh, Odell coming in. DJ Moore, I could see him having some ownership, not totally in love with it, but, I mean, he's a good player. I liked him last year, and if you want to play him, I don't think there's any problem with that. Dante Pettis, a lot of negativity going around Dante Pettis, and a lot of people had them as a breakout player. I honestly, I liked him too. I guess he's got to earn a role in the team now, so it's looking a little bit down for him, so probably not someone I want to play week one. Mike Williams, eh. Robbie Anderson, eh. Calvin Ridley, eh. Sterling Shepard, he's going to be one of the only guys out there to catch the ball, so I guess it's not the worst play in the world. Dallas has got a tough defense, though, so probably looking at only like Evan Ingram from there. Sammy Watkins, not versus Jacksonville. Corey Davis, not against Cleveland, really. Hopefully it's not sounding biased, but, I mean, they got... I mean, they look to have a pretty good defense, especially their front uh, you know, their front four in defense right now. Fitzgerald, no. Marvin Jones, no. D.D. Westbrook, we'll talk about D.D. Westbrook. Uh, I think he's a decent value play here, being Foles' number one target. Look to have good chemistry so far in the preseason. The Chiefs' defense has holes, and the Jags are going to have to pass the ball to stay in this one. Even though I do like Fournette, they're going to have to pass the ball too. Let's see, anyone else I'm missing? Christian Kirk's fine at 4,700. If we like Kyler Murray, which a lot of people do, you're going to have to like one of his options. I will say, uh, no, keep that for another video, for tight end video. But um, or, just disregard what I just said. <laughs> and then we got uh, Deshaun Jackson. I actually think he's interesting. He's back on the Eagles. He's a GPP dart play. All it really takes is one catch for him to kill value. He's not a high-volume guy, never will be. But... So I wouldn't touch him in cash for that, but I think GBPs, that's just fine, especially, you know, with his high upside. Then let's go all the way down to Curtis Samuel, if I can find him. I forget exactly what his price is. Where is he at? Well, let me search him. I can't remember exactly where his price was. Okay, Curtis Samuel is 4200 I thought he was in the low, uh, high 3K range, but... Guess I am mistaken. So, Curtis Samuel, uh, last guy I want to talk about. He is rising on everyone's boards. He used to be a deep sleeper guy. Now he's, you know, he's coming up. So now he's just a sleeper, and he's probably gonna go higher than he should now. So in uh, drafts, he's you're not really getting the best value for him outside of like home leagues. But uh, again, he's got some. He's got talent. He's not an elite player by any means, but he's got a ton of speed. He's a big. He's got big play potential, which should be on what should be an above average offense. I also think he's going to have a lot of ownership to his name this week. Uh, although at 4,200, you don't really need much for value there. One big play, and you could just you know, kill value and make him a great play. So, anyway, guys, that's all I got for the wide receiver breakdown video. I know the season's over a week away, but this is more of an early look video, so things can change by the time the season comes around. But I'm probably going to do a full video breakdowns on each position again. So, I just want to get the early videos out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it added value to you. And remember, if you guys could leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, really appreciate that. Really helps me out. And again, the cheat sheet and all the extra content is in the link in the description below. And I will leave you guys with that. So I'll see you guys in the next video. And best of luck if you guys are playing MLB or any other sports or preseason DFS.